Chicago, welcome in to the Chicago Sports Podcast presented by Coors Light. What's up, everyone? I am Kevin Kada, head of content at CHGO. Joined today, as always, by Mark the Carm Carmen and special guest Cody Del Mendo here to talk about Illini basketball. We are produced by Sarah Victor. Special Friday afternoon, guys. What's going on? Are you as tired as I am right now? Yeah, I, I feel great, Kevin. Um, I think this is a very big show for me just to get to uh, hang out with you and Cody today and try to get through my deep seated hatred for the University of Illinois and try to you know get to a point where I can feel like I can support Cody in his quest to get to the final four against the giant that is UConn. So it's a big day for me. I'm feeling energized. Got my tea rolling. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Cheers. Yeah. It was a late night last night watching the Illini win that game. Cody, you uh, stuck around to the end at the Country Club where we did our Cubs uh, live Cubs podcast. You you talked about the loss. You talked about Justin Steele's injury. But yep. then you got that. I don't know if it was an immediate pick-me-up because you had to sweat that out for a little bit. But uh, you went. <laughs> yeah. <I'm, clears throat> so uh, we started the – we started CSU Cubs post game, uh, like – I think they had like two, one or two minutes left in the first half. Illinois is up by 10. Uh, going to halftime, they're up by 10. And then midway through the show, Corey jumped in for me. And by that time, Iowa State had kind of started like – they had the momentum for most of the second half. They like made that comeback, got it within one, two possessions from – and then that, that's basically what it was, the final you know 10 minutes of the game. So, yeah, it was a sweat. Um, but – yeah, I, it was uh, one of the more impressive wins of the season. It might be the most impressive win of the season because their regular season, they're probably probably their most impressive win of the regular season was either beating Northwestern by 30 at home or beating Florida Atlantic uh, mm-hmm. at Madison Square Garden in the non-conference. Um, you know, they hung tough with Purdue a few times. They beat Wisconsin, but I, I know you were from Wisconsin, you went to Wisconsin, Kevin, but I, I don't even think you really took that team that serious. Um, at Just least for a little bit, I mean, they got bad, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> at least until February, right? Um, yeah, so like they just didn't really have any really big signature wins. I would say them beating Iowa State last night was probably their biggest win of the season in terms of just how good Iowa State is. I mean, I think people argued Iowa State should have been a one seed in some aspects. They had the number one rated defense on Kim Palm. Uh, so it was like the the best offense in the country versus the the best defense in the country. And I guess and for one night offense prevailed in some ways, even though it was a, it was a pretty defensive game. Like Illinois like regularly scores 80 points a game at least. And um they didn't get there last night, and they still. Well, won. I mean, if you guys would have hit your free throws, you would have. But to be a number two seed going fifteen of twenty nine is just to me like kind of mind boggling. The the one thing I kind of wanted to ask ask you, and I, I know Carm doesn't have any experience with this, uh, you know, deep uh, playoff runs being a Northwestern fan. But do you remember that, that, that tweet that goes around during during hockey playoffs about like hockey playoffs being something about like shooting cocaine and jumping out of a helicopter and why do that? Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, college basketball stress is a little different, and I don't know exactly what it's because it's not, it's not like hockey where a goal could happen at any second, but like, you know, it, it, in the March Madness, like you're either trying to dig your way out of a hole, or like in the case of the Illini yesterday, it was just like kind of hanging on for mm-hmm. dear life. Um, so I, I, like. <laughs> Can you compare it like can, can can you compare it to like anything I guess like it, is it is it like a, a baseball playoff victor a, you know baseball playoff experience I I'll say like in some ways but like with baseball it's like every pitch means so much and you know, so many different things can happen in one particular moment that can lead to one team taking the lead or getting momentum, right? With right. basketball, or at least in college hoops, um, I, I don't, I don't necessarily know because you, you, you mentioned Illinois missed free throws. You mentioned you can mention probably Illinois putting up some bad shots last night that either went in or didn't go in, and right. I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like the 
the stress is anything like hockey or baseball, just and specifically baseball for me, since I'm not like the biggest knowledger of hockey, but baseball's mm-hmm. a slow game and just like all these little things matter so much. And it goes into how momentum goes. Basketball is so fast paced. You're going up and down the court and it comes down to like fouls and the refs play a part in the game and, you know, are your best players showing up to play and all these things. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're that similar, but I mean, stress and sports, it's almost the same in some aspects. I I hate it. I mean, you know, Wisconsin had those, those back-to-back final four runs about 10 years ago and they made it to the national championship or, you know, we're leading Duke by nine points with, with like 12 to go. And I'm getting like, congratulations text from people I'm like what the hell are you doing and then just sitting there and watching coach K-, K get into the uh ref's ears and and seeing the badgers have no uh response for grayson freaking allen and uh you know tyus jones like it's so painful but, yeah. yeah no i that's uh i guess in some ways just like that like yeah. i was getting like I had the anxiety of like, man, they had a 10 point half point or have a 10 point halftime lead. And I'm going to have to now witness them blow this and ruin all of the, I don't know, good, good fortune that I felt like the program had built this year. Cause I, if they had lost that game last night, every Illini fan would have completely forgot about the fact that Brad Underwood finally got to a second weekend. We got to a second weekend for the first time since 2005, they would have completely let that go. And he just would have been destroyed by everyone in a line of fandom if they had blown that game, that 10 point half time lead. So I'm glad they didn't. And now they get to play UConn. And I see some people in our chat like, I kind of agree. I don't really feel like they have much of a chance against UConn, but it's March. You never know what happens. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's like a good transition part for here. By the way, uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Hit that like button. My man Charlie says Jalil over Kaminsky. Uh, if you go back and look at that game, Jalil got into early foul trouble and wasn't much of a factor. It was the guards who, who did him in and Sam Decker disappearing, but that's neither here nor there. Carm, uh, tomorrow, the Illini play UConn, right? Um, mm-hmm. I feel like 18 years ago, and maybe it's because I was a little closer to college, um, it seemed like everyone was on that Illini bandwagon from the start, and, and it's probably because of the regular season. And I think maybe some of the, you know, they had a little bit more Chicago flavor. I mean, D Brown, you know, was, was an absolute Chicago legend even before he went down uh, to Champaign. But let's say the uh, Illini rise up tomorrow and, and slay UConn. And, and UConn's overwhelming favorite. I mean, everyone's expecting them to go back to back. They'd be the first back to back champions, I think, since Florida. Yeah. Um, Billy Donovan's. Florida Billy Gators. Donovan's Florida teams. <laughs> Joe Kim knows Florida teams. Yeah. But Carm, I mean, you're you're a Northwestern guy, but can you corral your Chicago, Illinois guy to then come around for the Illini here? Or is that absolute non-starter for you? So I'm watching the game last night, right? It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm in bed. I'm not a country club. I'm 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 like in theory trying to not be bothered at least by and just just kind of watch it but the whole game cody and i hate to admit this but i just get this is what's going on i'm literally like uh, i'm so annoyed at iowa state i want to kill them how are you missing breakaway layups how like their offense was so horrible so i, yeah. I I'm, I'm like this the, illinois should be losing this game the way they're playing but they're not going to because iowa state stinks uh, at least they did last night at least and I, I haven't watched them all year long maybe they're a lot better team just to hearing what you said they are they were and i will admit they did miss some like freebie layups and stuff and it, it just a lot yeah. of them like yeah. like i'm like oh my god this is pathetic but so um my point is and i don't know what like i can go back to the you know, old man karma. I'll go back to the flying Illini, Kendall Gill, Stephen Bardo, that crew. Yeah. Everyone had the Illinois shorts back then. That was like that was a thing in in 1988 to to have. And and I like kind of like that team. That team, as a young karma, I was able to get there a little bit. But I think I've just been at too many Northwestern games where good friends of mine, like the great David Frank, who's a big CHGO supporter, he would come down. And there was one loss in in the Bill Carmody era where the Cats were up the whole time. They lose by one. 
I'm sitting, you know, doing my WGN radio stuff at the score show. I am beside myself. They lost it. He just comes down, boom, boom. And I'm just like, I don't think I can ever. And I've got, you know, Cody, you're a great guy. Uh, my buddy that I just named, great dude. Lots of fine Illinois people out there. I can't get myself to root for him. I just can't do it. <laughs> I don't have it. I wish I could yeah. be that guy. I wish I could just sit back. Like Hogue would say, what do you mean? I root for the Big Ten when Wisconsin's out of there. I, those are my friends. Seems like, yeah, but so it's not like, I'm not like root, not rooting for my friend to like not get sick or, you know, like, or lose his job, or whatever. We're talking about their sports team. I think you'll get over it if you lose. So, um, you know, I just, I've, I, I, I'm going to I guess, secretly, I guess now outwardly, be rooting for UConn tomorrow. So you, so I won't have to feel the pain of Illinois being successful, which makes me feel like a bad person. But that's the truth of where I'm at. Yeah. And big of you I, to I, admit. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that I'm like into this team like a 2005 team. And again, like I covered, you know. I hated, I hated the comeback of 05. I hated it. Yeah, wow. I, I, oh, I wanted to kill Arizona. Like what? How, it was it was torture, and it was one of the greatest games of all time, arguably. Yeah. Were you at that game, Carm? I wasn't, and I was actually just recently. It, whatever, it's popping up everywhere. It's you know making its way through the old social media world. So I'm I'm rewatching the highlights. Darren Williams has been ridiculous. The whole thing. I forgot how great Luther Head was in that. I game. was I was at that game. That's probably the loudest stadium I've ever been in. Obviously, it was all Illini. Uh, that Arizona team was great. I was stringing for the Kansas City Star, which I had just recently left, and I it was like a Saturday game, and they had an early eight thirty p.m. deadline, and that game got over at eight thirty three, and I had that entire thing written, you know, by. 8 p.m. or whatever it was, and then they started their comeback. So I'm, like, watching that game and then just, like, furiously trying to rewrite the thing, and then it goes to overtime. And, I mean, it, it was it was absolutely amazing. But it, to me, it was like just being on it, – it was like you were at a rock concert and, like, the greatest game you've ever been at. I mean, it's, it's definitely top five of – I mean, maybe top three of games I've ever been at. So – um, I was definitely into that. This, this team, I I guess I just haven't bought into it. Now, I'm just kind of a this school of thought. Like, I'm an Illinois resident. I want to see schools, you know, you know, and, and these, these, you know, student athletes um, represent our state well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when it comes against UConn, I've gotten, you know, why would I want UConn to win? They've won more than enough national titles in my lifetime. Um, so I'll definitely be pulling for the Illini tomorrow. Cody, is there room for casual fans on the on the bandwagon? <laughs> um, well, to go off your you, the 2005 Illinois Arizona game, I was at like my great aunt's house with my mom, and like my mom isn't like a big Illinois fan at all. The only reason I'm an Illinois fan, outside of the fact that I grew up like an hour away from Champaign, is mm -hmm. that like all my friends I grew up with were Illinois fans, and a lot of it was like the one team that me and all of my friends could like rally behind because where i grew up it was like cubs cardinals so like and i and, and, and it's like 85 90 percent cardinal fans so it was like the one team that i could like just rally around with all like every single one of my friends so it was like a big culture thing but um yeah it was still to this day one of the craziest comeback wins i, I it's unreal uh but as far as like casual fans like for this team like if if you were to casually root for this Illinois team, but you had never done it before, I really mm -hmm. won't understand it. Just because this team is kind of the villain of the NCAA tournament this year, based off of Terrence Shannon's like off the court stuff that's been going on that people have been talking yeah. about. Um, if you're a Chicagoan though, and you know, based no matter whatever you believe, want to believe whatever, like he did mm -hmm. go to Lincoln Park High School, so. Like, if you want to root for a Chicago kid, like, I know he's not like D Brown in terms of like the legend that he was, but because right. he, he went to Texas Tech and then transferred to Illinois two years ago, whatever. But, um, I personally don't care. I just, if you had never done it before in recent years, I don't understand. <laughs> but <laughs> for me, it's like I didn't go to Illinois. So, like, and right. I get on social media, I get a lot of flack sometimes for being an Illini fan, even though I didn't go to Illinois. So it's, it. I don't know if it's like this, you know, I, I, I don't understand. Well, and it. CHGO, our two biggest college basketball fans, didn't go to the school that they were yeah. <laughs> yeah. and brags to Purdue, which is kind of interesting. Right. 
Right. And I, right. listen, like, I, I wish I could have gone to Illinois. I just didn't have the grades or the money to go there, you know? <laughs> so, like, it, it, uh, I've told people this, like, a, a lot, a lot of Illini fans and like that grew up in central Illinois, it, a lot of them didn't go there. They just, they kind of, it was just part of the culture. And if, I think at that time, especially when I was a kid, like Illinois was, I wouldn't say they were anywhere close to being a blue blood, but they had won the big 10 a bunch of times. They gone made deep March runs. And then up until this year, they just got on a, they had been on a 19 year drought without getting to a second weekend. And mm. You know, so like now if it's like new new territory, it feels like even though in the past and you guys would remember that a lot, a lot more than I did since I was a kid. You guys, are, I'm not trying to call you old, call you old, but you are old. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I, I think if you if you want to hop on the wagon now, um, I don't care because I mean, I did basically as a kid. But um, yeah. if you had never done it before, I, I don't understand why you would now since i i really do feel like this is kind of like the a villainized look the people are looking at illinois as a villain based off a lot of things of that i've seen on social media i just a shout out to i got one illini fan who's out there as a fan of chgo2 his name is brian stout or big he's in the chat every now and then i don't think he's watching right now because he sucks but um <laughs> he was in attendance last night wearing the orange I mean, traveling, the whole thing, he offered me to, he's like, I got an extra ticket if you want to fly on out for tomorrow, which of course yeah. I'm not doing because that's insane. But um, yeah, I, 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 the bandwagon, he, he, he has brought some people on the bandwagon. Um, so it is, it is growing despite the lack of popularity of this Illini team compared to others. But one of the things, by the way, 89, final four, they're, 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 you know, they're playing Michigan. So that that added on to it too. I was, you know, rooting against Go Blue was a lot easier. I I have to say that if Illinois somehow finds a way to beat UConn tomorrow and Purdue wins tonight and then wins on Sunday, and Illinois and Purdue potentially play like me and Greg Braggs, we might not be able to like I don't know how we're gonna be able to coexist for like a week at least. <laughs> 120 club I, I love dead. final four matchups those are always fun yeah but uh i personally think purdue and and, and uconn those are the two teams that i think are be the best teams like it's hard to tell i think purdue has that chip on their shoulder after what happened last year they haven't you know they haven't looked bad in in any of their games so far you know they're a one seed, so yeah. you can say, oh, an easy path. But, you know, as we've seen in the past, they've had – they've lost to 15 seeds and 13 seeds and 16 seeds. And it's like, well, this year they're, they're taking care of business to this point. So, I think – again, I think they got that chip on their shoulder. Um, we'll see for Illinois tomorrow. I think that they can score with anyone. If they can defend like they did yesterday, maybe. Maybe. But eh, – All right, Cody. One word uh, – I got a question for you. One word answer, yes or no. Are you content – with how far Illinois has gotten, if it ends at the Elite Eight. Yeah, I'm content. Yes. All right, I want to tell everyone about Prize Picks, which is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. You definitely want to check them out this weekend uh, for college hoops action, both men's and women's. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Um, like I mentioned, you can pick, you know, between men's or women's college basketball. But what the cool thing is, uh, you can also just uh, mix in different sports. So now with baseball starting up, you can maybe put put down some money on a Cody, Cody Bellinger, um, you know, opportunity. Mix in Caitlin Clark, uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. It's all out there. You can now win up to 100 times your money on price picks price picks with as little as four correct picks and uh they also offer injury insurance which i think is cool so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured and for football or basketball games if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second that player projection doesn't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live price picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like taco tuesday each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player, player projections up to twenty five percent to provide even more value. Uh, last week, they had like a, a promotion: Caitlin Clark over zero point five 
points. That was a pretty easy one. And uh, ha had a lot of fun with that, uh, mixing it with um, who I already forget the kid's name from um, Oakland, the kid with the hairline. Um, I did an over on oh, his movie. Yeah. You can't miss. Jack. Jack something. Jack. Like Golicky. Is that how he yeah. pronounced his name? Yeah. People are like, we'll never forget you. And it's like, yeah, people are going to forget you in 48 <laughs> hours. But anyhow, <laughs> go to prizepicks.com forward slash CHGO and use code CHGO for a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com forward slash CHGO and use code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. And a shout out to our friends at CD1 Price Cleaners. Customers save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD1 Price Cleaners, which I did, by the way, this week. Place is phenomenal. Uh, other, other cleaners, they charge a different price for every garment. They charge me the same price for the pants and the shirts that I brought in there. They also have upcharges at other places that you may pay a different price each time you visit. Not the case at CD1 Price Cleaners. One low price for any garment, even your Illinois jerseys. ILL, there it is. The same one low price. Dry cleaning, wash and fold laundry, blankets and comforters, tailoring and alterations, leather cleaning, area rug cleaning. They got, they do it all. Place is unbelievable. You walk in there. They do it right there, and they have it done for you the same day. At least they did the other day. It, at worst, it's next day. But you get the text, your stuff is done. It's it's really first class service there. So what you got to do to get involved is go do this. Visit chgo.cd1.com, and once there, you can pick from an in store coupon or an online pickup and delivery coupon options. They got it all there for you. CD1 Price Cleaners. Get on in, get it done, look fresh with our friends at CD1. Dot com is how you get there. CD1.com. Spell that out. O N E. I love CD1. It's like one of those things that I used before. And like when I heard they were coming on, I was like, yes. So. I drive by one every day and I'm and I'm I'm thankful that we got them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like I used to need it a lot more before I worked at a place where I could just wear hoodies all the time. So I'm not in there <laughs> as much, but when I do need, you know, like stuff I wear like holidays and you know, Easter, that's where I go. So there you go. I'll be in there, you know, bringing the I got a Easter. rug I need to take in there. There you go. There you go. Uh, opening day. It was, uh, you know, I think it was fun because we had great CHGO outings, right? We, we started off at the ballpark pub, did the mm -hmm. Bears show from there, the White Sox show, had good crowd, good turnout there. And then I hooked it north to the country club and then had a good time for the most part during the, uh, during the Cubs opening day. Um, what were your your takeaways, I guess? Uh, I'll start with you, Carm. Well, this is the time of year where uh, it's an annual tradition where I tell Cody that the Cubs stink and they're not going to be good, and then he tells me that they will be, and then Cody ends up being right at some point. My, my take, of course, after one game is that the Cubs are overrated and the lineup is mediocre and the starting pitching ain't great, and why is it Albert Alzale the closer, um, even though I know he had a good year last year? But – Rewind, rewinding back to yesterday, uh, the ballpark pub was sweet. That was a ton of fun. It was really awesome to be out there uh, on opening day and get to do the Bears show and see people like Alejandro supporting and just a great crowd overall. And then I went into Sox um, and stayed for a handful of innings. Garrett Crochet looked great. White Sox offense did not. I don't think – I mean, one through five – that off, you know, their lineup's not terrible. I mean, it's mm -hmm. obviously there's you know nine guys in the lineup, so you need more. But I, I don't like. Could the White Sox be like a pesky sixty-seven to seventy win team versus you know losing a yeah. hundred? I, I think they're. I think that's on the table at least. It's a um, it's a bad division, but yeah, it's yeah. it's you know. I was going to ask you about the crowd. We. We thought that okay, this is going to be close to a sellout because the parking lots were packed. You and I went to the the Miller Light party, um, which was pretty cool. Um, thank you for having us, Miller Light. Even though this is presented by Coors Light, but you know they're owned by the same company, so I think it's okay to mention them. Um, but then, like, so then when I was driving down, uh, driving down the highway. Um, the upper deck looked pretty empty. So what was, I mean, were there people, like, what was the crowd they, like? I actually thought there was going to be more up there. Uh, and they announced 33. So mm -hmm. that means there's roughly 6,000 seats available in the upper deck, which 
looking at it, it felt like there was a little bit more than that. Uh, but maybe people were just, you know, hanging out at the bars or whatever they were doing. I, maybe they all went downstairs and were milling around in the bleachers. But I was expecting horrible. Like early in the week, we kept on hearing they had that they were they had sold under twenty five. So at least because it was, it turned out to be a nice day. They were, they were turned into at least a little bit of White Sox buzz. Um, yeah. The highlight of the game, though, was Javi. They were, you know, they were going nuts on Javi um, because he. Did you guys? I don't know if you did. You see the Javi end of the inning yeah. where he fired the ball at the net, yeah. and so they're booing him coming off, and then he's down 0-2 in the count. I'm thinking Javi's going to strike out. He hits a base hit to right, and net first pitch, you know, going. The catcher bobbles the ball, stolen base, push the ball to the right side. Now he's on third, and he scores on a sack fly. That's your one run. White Sox fans, they hate. Javi Baez slash the Cubs. So it's it's just a little, I think it's a little underrated that they literally lost the game yesterday because of Javi Baez. Uh, you know, in in essence, if we were to boil it down to its simplicity. Oh uh, man, yeah, I, I remember thought, seeing. I thought the other highlight was uh, was Jason Benetti being shown on the uh, on the scoreboard, and then all White Sox fans applauding him for actually being able to escape the the horror that is White Sox baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it it was it was real weird like you know there was it was a nice tribute to or a nice honoring of Jason eight years whatnot. Um, I, I was he, glad they actually like put the live camera on him because at first it looked like an obituary or something like remembering Jason Benet. <laughs> it was like <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah. It's kind of weird, but yeah, I, I he was. Let's just say this: Jason looked very happy that they did that for him. He had a huge smile yeah. on his face and. Um, you know, kisses for the crowd and whatnot. Uh, Jason Benetti should be the announcer for the White Sox. I don't, I don't know how that all happened, but, but it was. Um, I remember that was an. I, it was. I, I had thought about, you know, they were playing the Tigers and the Benetti was there until I sat down. I'm like, oh my god, Benetti's up there right now. Mm-hmm. That's that is a weird thing. You leave your team in in not the best of circumstances, and then your first game is against them in Chicago. So yeah. it had to be weird for him. Uh, I remember when uh, first year Lane Casper was with the Sox, like was, I think it was Cubs Sox, like right after the deadline 2021. And like, I think the Cubs gave the, did the same thing for, for him too. And it was still kind of weird. I mean, it wasn't the first day of the season, obviously, but it, it would have been, I think it would have been weirder if they didn't do anything, if they didn't acknowledge him at all. So, Yeah. Well, it's really weird, by the way. The, the the Bears have not like put out a thank you anything for Justin Fields, right? No, they. Ha- I haven't seen that. Right. Be, I don't know when they could do that. By the way, has the I trade mean, I officially think gone through? <laughs> I think it, they missed it. Yeah. The, the the highlight of yesterday for me, I just one other thing. I you know I went I went up to the press box to shake hands, say hello real quick to you know the media and whatnot. So I'm walking out of there, and walking right towards me is Jerry Reinsdorf. Uh-oh. And I'm not friends with Jerry. And, you know, we're not – he doesn't know who I am, at least by name. I, I don't know if he recognizes his face or not. But he he sees me and has this huge smile on his face. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do right now? Jerry's smiling at me. So I – Extend the hand, Jerry. How you doing? Happy opening day, and we have this nice conversation about a mutual friend of ours. And I oh. tell I, I tell Jerry about hey, you know one, yeah. you know my 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 I'll, I'll leave him out of it, but whatever. Just like so, it was like this really cordial, nice conversation with Reinsdorf. And then I walked out, and I'm like, yeah, that was not expected at all. Like I, I it was completely not on my radar of things that could happen, but. Jerry was very nice too at the Carmen CHGO at that moment. So Carmen is now in line to be the GM of the Bulls for the next twenty five years. Yeah, I mean, I, I, he's I don't gonna get who, you a job. Who, whoever he thought I was, if I could be that guy, I could rise up in one of the organizations here. I don't know. <laughs> so Cody, uh, yesterday Justin Steele goes down. I actually got the reaction from you, Luke and Corey. Uh, a lot of concern. I think it, you know, our 
there was some concern that he blew out his knee. It looks like the, it looks like the hamstring. They're going to have that MRI, but it's, yeah. I think it's pretty clear that we're going to go through a little bit of a soap opera here. Hopefully not that long. Like, okay, is he ready mm-hmm. to go? Is he not? Um, yeah. Fingers crossed that he's not, but like, how are you feeling here on the second day of the season uh, with, with the Cubs ace already on the shelf? Well, uh, as, as Carm said at the beginning, you know, with all of his unneeded slander, um, <laughs> I, I can't sit here and say that I feel great. That's for sure. Uh, they lost an in extra innings last night on top of the fact that Steele's hurt. He's their best pitcher, at least most. He's. I can't say he's the most proven because Kyle Hendricks is still in the rotation. But as far as mm-hmm. like guys with upside, guys who could still even get better, he has. He is that guy. He is, and he was an All Star last year. He was in the Cy Young race in in mid September. Um, so any, I mean, any team who loses a guy like that for even just a few starts is 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 a big deal. Um, you know, a lot of Cubs fans are were pissed that the Cubs didn't sign Jordan Montgomery or Blake Snell, especially on the short term deals that they got. And in some aspects, I agree. Um, but with the way they operate, we've talked a lot about it on CHO Cubs. Like they want to have flexibility at the deadline, but it's like you got to get to the deadline to to buy. You know, like. You know, with steel going down, it's like, okay, well, these got these young pitchers you guys have compiled and uh, built, and you got the pitch lab that you that you taunt uh, you talk all about, and and all this. Um, let's see it, man. Like, mm-hmm. I don't feel great about it, but we're gonna see. Like, the they got some young guy, they got some young pitchers that are scheduled to debut this year anyway. Um, but I didn't expect them to need one of them in april so that's that's kind of the thing for me and so <sighs> yeah i uh i don't know what they're gonna do at this point but it's it's not great that's that's for sure it's it's definitely a a, a sign i'm i'm I, the only thing that i'm trying to be optimistic about is like hopefully it's like the minimum stent like you know mm-hmm. 15 days or whatever miss yeah i mean it's gonna have to be because i think when you you know you you come off of an 83 win season and you don't spend a lot and you bring back largely the same thing it's like you're going to need everyone to perform at you know at a bare minimum at at the level that they were last year and when you spend money you're buying yourself a margin of error and and they Mm -hmm. didn't you they didn't do that now all your margin for error is going to come in the maturation of those prospects that you've been compiling. Now, does that happen? Maybe it does, but you know, maybe it doesn't. So to kind of already be dipping into that, um, you know, five innings into the season to me is just scary. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I think Charlie pointed out here in the in the comments. Well, it, it's a bad division. You don't necessarily have to. You know, it'd be great if you could run away with it and, and pull a 2016 Cubs. That's not going to happen. That's not this type of team. But yeah. you know, I think there's there's part of us that are hoping. Okay, maybe you can you know, get out to a you know 15 and seven start or something, and, and and you know put some good distance there to the beginning. But um, you know, I don't know if, if we already have Drew Smiley ma- making starts here, then it's uh, it's going to be an issue. So yeah. Uh, for I, I think for someone who really wants to see the Cubs do well this year and and really bring another like you know really kind of rocking team and that, that people are hopeful for, I didn't feel great about it yesterday. Yeah, no, nah, as again, like realistically, it, it's it's more about like okay, Cubs, you put yourself in this position now. You have to you have to go. You have to let some of your young guys that you're taking you're putting a lot of stock into. Mm-hmm. You got. to one of those guys has to come up and and be that guy. And again, like with it, it's not that they didn't spend money. Like they they signed Bellinger, they signed Imanaga, they they made the trade for for Bush, um, who's going to play first base every day. He had a good day yesterday. Walked twice, had a knock, whatever. Right? They did make some really good moves, but they didn't do anything to put them like over the top, like a, a complete runaway with the central, or even be in the conversation for like, you know, to be in the conversation with like the Braves or the Dodgers, even. Which I don't know if they, you know, may, if they had signed Otani or traded for Juan Soto, okay, maybe. But like mm-hmm. that, that's they, they're not at that level. And if if this team is going to be anything like the Diamondbacks of last year that, you know, won 84 games and went all the way to the World Series, 
you know, they're they're going to need some of these young guys to step up and and be, you know, better than what we're expecting. So I don't whatever know whatever the equivalent of Corbin Carroll is, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I, even the Rangers, like they're they're sitting there and they've they're the defending world champions, and you've got Wyatt, Wyatt Langford coming up, and you know, was, yeah, it's, it's, the Cubs have some high end prospects supposed to debut this year, like you know, PCA Pete Carl Armstrong debuted last year, but. You know, they're going to start him in the minors this year. Um, I think they want him to get, you know, at least another 150 at bats. Like, Cade Horton is like their best pitching prospect. I don't know when they expect him to come up this year, though. Um, mm -hmm. Ben Brown was in the top 100 prospects uh, for MLB pipeline last year. He would have probably debuted with the Cubs if he didn't get hurt. He's healthy now. He pitched well in the spring. I think, as far as like taking these starts from Justin Steele, I think it could be one, he could be an option. I also think Hayden Wisniewski could be the other option who I think Cubs fans were really excited about going into last year, but he had such an up and down season. Didn't exactly take this, the, the role that Cubs gave him the opportunity. Um, he didn't excel in it. And then he was really inconsistent in the bullpen. So I think Cubs fans are down on him right now, um, but he was a rookie last year. So how are you getting better in year two? You know, it's, it's all questions they're valid questions and like it, it's hard for me to like sit here and be like this guy's gonna do this and this guy's gonna i don't know like and that's right. why i said earlier like the cubs put themselves in this position and i said on our show on our season preview show i was like if they don't make the playoffs this year i'm i will finally start calling for names like whether it's jed or carter and you know whoever i, I like, don't think you'll be the only one, one. you won't right. be the only one I just I've I've been pretty patient since the deadline of 2021. And I yeah. and I've been I think I've been more patient than most fans have been. I've tried to see the the direction, I've tried to see the vision that Jed and Carter are feeding us. But I think every fan was pretty I don't know, like not didn't feel it felt like we needed more going into the season. But they they are good enough to where they could flirt with a wild card. So it's like, okay, we're just going to be a mid. All right. <laughs> well, I, I want to talk to Carm about what would finally get him and capture his attention because as we drove over to um, Guaranteed Rate yesterday, he was kind of like, well, I, I don't know how much I'm into it. But uh, first, I do want to tell everyone about the March Radness sales event out there at Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake. Head on over there to join on in the savings. Ray Chevrolet is one of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest. You'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. They have the perfect tailgate vehicles waiting over there at Ray Chevy during truck month. For a limited time, they are offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 available. They also have 125 vehicles under 20000 Seriously, guys, can price and get more affordable? By the way, got my first ride in uh, Carm's new Chevy Trax. He was uh, nice enough to drive me and sales guy Jim from Ballpark Pub over to Lot B. Very nice ride. Love the leather in there. Um, so go over to Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake. Mention CHGO. You'll get a free oil change. And uh, you can start off the new year right and schedule that one by April 1st. So you only have three days to do that. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They have been serving the community since 1963 by new roads. And a shout out to uh, Kevin. It was awesome to have you in the Chevy tracks. Tracks technology will get you anywhere. Uh, and Cody, I've got a positive on Justin Steele being hurt, which I'll talk about in one second here. But first off, to our friends at Game Time. Game time tickets, download the app, and yes, how about this? Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually tend to go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, lowest price guarantee. Game time taking the guesswork out of buying tickets and now buying MLB tickets. Uh, look, you want to get the best price. You want to see where you're going to sit. You want to have the low price guarantee. You want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. So for a limited time, all users, $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more on the game time app with the code first pitch. 
So if you're thinking about going to opening day, it's a little pricey. Well, you're going to get 20 bucks off on your two tickets, which makes it a little bit less pricey for you, which is a beautiful thing. That's You spell out first pitch, F-I-R-S-T, pitch, for $20 off from March 25th until April 14th only. So get on in. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. So, Carmen, uh, I asked you before the break, like, what, what would really kind of take you to kind of just capture your imagination? I, I have an answer for this because I think I'm a little bit uh, kind of in that bucket. Um, but, like, what would it take for you to get back on, for you to feel about the Cubs the way you, maybe you did 10 years ago? Honestly, I, I think we need, or I need, um, a dynamic rookie who is interesting to come up and sort of capture old man Carm here, young man Carm, in my prime Carm. I, you know, the the twenty the smart power. That's that's my answer. Like I don't, I feel like, like I, there's just no, yeah, right. Who is it? Am I supposed to go nuts for Justin Steele? I mean, it's it's a nice story, and he had a great year last year, and he seems like a really likable guy. And my Cody, my one tidbit here is like the, the dude had a huge innings jump last year, so I just I always get worried about guys getting hurt, and so maybe this will play into him getting to ease into the season, which maybe works out better for Steele in the long term. Henceforth, the Cubs. That's one way I was looking at this because he's always going like he's always yeah. lifting up his arm and shoulder. I'm like wondering, are you all right? Is that thing about to fall off? Because he's had a bunch of like little tweaks here and there. So maybe it'll do him good. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, you know, we can't relive the past year, but Chris Bryant was incredibly likable. Anthony Rizzo was a great just cornerstone for the franchise. Javi was a ton of fun. Schwarber was Schwar God. I mean, that team was like, there was just so much fun there. And then the way it all ended, you let Schwarber go and you signed Jack Peterson. That was nauseating. Um, you know, I got the Javi thing, but Javi was a ton of fun to watch. Um, I would have signed KB. Apparently I would have been wrong on that, but it's just, I, I still haven't sort of gotten over how that whole thing just fizzled and they just showed basically no respect to anyone. <laughs> Anthony Rizzo should still be is, playing is, first base. Can Christopher Morrell be that guy for you, Carm? And is Christopher Morrell that guy for you right now, Cody? Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as the way that Carm described it, like an exciting player that like brings fans in that, you know, gets you excited about the team. Like if Christopher, Mor Christopher Morrell was a couple feet away from hitting a go ahead grand slam last night in the 10th inning, I think it was, he was either the top of the ninth or the 10th inning. I don't remember. Tenth, yeah. And if he does, if that ball is fair, we're sitting here talking about Christopher Morrell right now and the breakout season that I'm I've already predicted for him to have this year. So um yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying though, Carm. Like those guys like stole my heart. I cheer for those guys every single day. That's why when we were talking about Javi against the Sox yesterday, I was just laughing because I that's just the type of player he is. Like it, I always tell my Sox fan friends, like, don't boo the guy. That's going to be that's going to be something that, like, gets him going, you know. And um, but, yeah, I, when you look back at it, Rizzo's the the one for sure that probably should still be here, considering the issues they've had at first base for <laughs> years until, you know, hopefully Michael Bush works out. Maybe he's the guy uh, that turns into the star. He is technically a rookie. He was a top 50 prospect. Uh, it's got a lot of high upside. There's something to like. Is he is he Javi Baez like? No, but maybe he can be like what Chris Bryant was in terms of just being likable and being a really good baseball player. Don't I don't it's hard to be as good as what Chris Bryant was was because he won MVP and rookie of the year and all these things. But um I, I'm with you in terms of fact that they they probably don't have a player that was that 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 that's like Chris Bryant. Um, you know, and you know, a full blown superstar bound player. Uh, so unless I, mean, I, I think we do have that, we do have that guy in Chicago, it's Luis Robert Jr. But I think yeah. when you think of the meme where it's the crappy house with the Ferrari underneath the crappy awning that's about to fall down, that's that's what yeah. it is, right? Yeah, and I think I think Eloy had that promise, you know, it hasn't come through because of the injuries. Um, I think Michael Kopech with, with, with his arm had that promise has not been able to put it together. Um, it, it just, I guess baseball is hard because it's not like, it's not like the NBA where you can just kind of go out. And even if you have kind of a crappy team, it's fun to watch that guy play when that guy's only coming up once every nine bats or 
every you know only pitching every five days it's it's just a different thing you do need that really solid team around him as well i i'll, I'll say this cody uh, real fast i'm excited for the 120 club and whenever i go to uh with you and Braggs, and i'll be popping in there and whoever else is going to show up to support but uh it's I'll, when i go to wrigley it's fun the, it in the park like the cub fans still there is a juice in the park of supporting the team that is that is palpable which is amazing to me uh and i also uh, i'm somewhat amazingly to a slight left turn when i go to the united center right now bulls fans are they're into the bulls it's wednesday night against the pacers monday night against the wizards they're losing to the wizards place is sold out and they're i mean and and there's just sort of this leftover Bulls love that exists, like in the actual stadium. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess. But they, I mean, that's a team that also has likable players between Demar, Io, Kobe. You know, yeah. that's that's true. Yeah. That's Andre I, Drummond fan club. I, I think the Cubs do have a long list of likable players. Like if you're if you're a Cubs fan who follows the team as much as I do, or just you know even yeah. casually, like Dansby Swanson. You know he's he's been a popular player across the league, it was especially in Atlanta for years, right? I think Braves fans were pretty sad whenever he left, even though they're still really freaking good without him. Um, you know, Cody Bellinger, everyone questioned it, but I think he's found a home here. Um, so Ian Happ has always been a fan favorite here in some ways. He's never going to be like a superstar, but he did win an all. He did be, he was an All Star one year, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. They have like they just have guys who people like. They don't have that superstar player. They don't have their Sammy Sosa like when I was a kid. They don't have the Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo because like the closest thing to Anthony Rizzo they have now in terms of just you know the nostalgia or just guy who's been here forever is Kyle Hendricks. You know like yeah like they I, I'm with you when it comes to like the star power and, and a guy that could you know put this team over the top. They're trying to develop that guy. Maybe it's Christopher Morrell. I, I don't know. But the one guy that I will say that I think could bring you in, Carm, is Cade Horton. Because this guy is getting hype like Mark Pryor hype. And no one has gotten Mark Pryor hype like that in a long time for the Cubs. So he's a pitcher. He's not like a guy who's going to hit every day or anything. But I, he is a guy that a lot of Cubs fans are excited to see at some point it's just unfortunate we have to wait for the process to play out so so i mean let's go. This, this time next week we'll be out at the friday 120 club for the first one april 5th make sure you join us I, yeah. i'm i'm, I'm I stoked for it, Cody. i think it's going to be a game changer for cho and i think it's going to be a great community and i think we're on the we're on the start of building something really really big so props to you jake and, and brags for getting this thing off the ground yeah, no, I'm really excited. Uh, we had a we had like 65 people who RSVP to the watch party yesterday, and I don't know if all 65 showed up, but all I can say is that our watch party yesterday, there were more people there for that slash the post game show than the year before when we did like it was just a pregame, but it was opening day, and like people were right. coming in and out of Country Club and everything. Like there was definitely more people at our event last night than a year before. So we're seeing some positive growth. And I guess for me, like doing this thing with Bragg's Friday 120 club, it's all about just introducing more people to us and, and uh, you know, in, in, while also hanging out with people who do know us. So it was very cool to like, just put faces to YouTube names last night um, right. uh, at, at country club. So I, to me, like the community aspect is always what I've thought is the coolest thing about what we're trying to do. And yeah. we're me and I, Braggs is going to bring out a new uh, a new form of me, I think, because he's just he'll talk to anyone. And and I, I can. I mean, I sang the stretch to the entire bar last night after like a handful of blue moons. <laughs> but like um, Braggs is definitely a lot more uh, he, he'll talk to anyone like I said so I think he'll help right. bring that out of me a little bit more too and so we're just trying to go out and make a bunch of new friends basically <laughs> yeah so definitely definitely hit up all chocom check out our events page for the 120 stuff uh, all you have to do is bring your uh, self and a bleacher ticket to Murphy's next Friday uh, Otani and the Dodgers are in town and be kicking off so looking forward to that um, all right 
this would not be the Chicago Sports Podcast if we didn't talk at least about Caleb Williams for a federally mandated at least two and a half minutes. <laughs> I'm here. Um, I'm not going to Caleb around. Williams because that's, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, obviously, I'm excited. Carm's excited. Cody, you're excited. Uh, what, what did you make of um, – he was at the USC women's basketball game. He had a pink, pink phone, I guess, but it was a clear yeah. case. Um, his nails were, it turned out his nails were actually clear or they were painted. I don't, I didn't quite understand the video that came out yesterday, but he snapped back and, it, you know, kind of really showed his personal side. And I think he made a lot of fans in Chicago yesterday who were maybe on the side. They saw the attitude. They saw him kind of sticking up for himself and having fun with it. But what did you make of it, um, uh, Cody? Um, it's almost like he kind of just leaned into it, right? Like sometimes like from my own experience, for instance, I put a, I, we put up the video of me swinging and missing at a bunch of balls at batting practice at Wrigley the other day. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, he just kind of leaned into it. What I don't care what the guy does as long as he, you know, is, is what he's advertised as, as a football player, uh, you know, in, in terms of what you're doing off the field, like I've, I, I really don't care. Um, I do like the fact that he clapped back a little bit just to like, it showed the personality and get to know the guy a little bit more. Cause all I had really known about him is like, okay, he's one of the top quarterbacks coming out of the draft. I watched plenty of games of him at USC uh, because of gambling reasons. Um, but yeah, I didn't really know anything about the guy and to yeah. see that personality come out a little bit was at least interesting. I, I think it's great. And I, I, I just look forward to when this like debate over, quarterbacks is at least put down for a little bit and we can all like get on the wagon and and go go to war for the guy because yeah at that, some point we're gonna have to do that right <laughs> so i think it's interesting it's it's obvious to, to it's one thing to be you know you, you stand up for yourself and, and who you are and i think that's cool i think it's gonna be a whole nother thing like once once he has a bad game and all of chicago is coming after him that's like a different thing when you, you don't necessarily have like you know yeah you, you can't say, well, you know, you can't stand on a good performance or whatever. But uh, I, I find like the finger, the, the painted fingernails thing weird because like dudes pitting their like fingernails has been like a thing for a long time. Like Kurt Cobain did it hmm. 30 years ago. And I remember like some of my high school classmates, you know, who, you know, had long hair and played guitar like doing it. So to me, it's like it, it doesn't seem like that that big of a deal. Um uh, Although, like, some of this, I don't know, like, I don't know if you remember, Carm, like, Michael Jordan having an earring was, like, kind of a big deal for a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it, right, when the, when athletes started doing that, that was a thing. I, we talked a lot about this at CH Joe Bears today, so I don't want to give uh, the same take here, but it, it I mean, listen, uh, I like a good manicure. I'd love to get a pedicure right now. I wish they were more affordable to the current price range that I could get these things done. Caleb can afford it. Good for him. I'll give you one conspiracy theory on this. Okay. The, he knows he's a bear, so he can say whatever he wants right now, and he's not worried about it. That's one side. Uh, or the bears are like, hey, just before before we do this, stay off social media. Don't do anything wild, and you're going to be the guy. And he's decided that he doesn't want to play for the Bears, so he just went off the deep end and <laughs> and 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 and, <laughs> and tried to get himself attention. That's two things that I thought that's, of that I hadn't thought of earlier today while you guys were just talking. That's a fair so, point. So. I'm glad that you buried that at the uh, the tail end of a Friday show, and probably everyone's out on this beautiful Friday afternoon already enjoying their their course light. Hey. That's a great choice. I hope, but for the people that are watching this, they just got a nice hot calm, three twenty six p.m. end of the CHGO Sports. Hot a nice hot calm. Yeah, Ugh. nothing like it. There's he's, nothing he's, like a hot calm. He's trying to get himself out of Chicago with the, with the move. That was it. He <laughs> hates, like calm. Can you? Where, where are you broadcasting from right now? I have my deep humidifier going on here. Um, uh, I mean. Can you yes. at least like what? What do you like, get out of like Jordan poster? Or something? Get, I'll get you some like 3M poster tracks. To okay, put on. all right. This is listen. Okay, I, we we're working on the background, and I will unveil it soon. I'm not You're working you, on it. There's nothing there. <laughs> it's a blank canvas, buddy. It's in my head. It's gonna come. It's gonna. It's gonna all come out. 
I, I can't, you know, listen, there are not a lot of great options right here. I, 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 I've got my, now, now, you know, we don't, the future is bright. That's all I'll just tell you. There's going to be some, it'll be, I will, Cody's looks way cooler. You look amazing. I look bland, but I just, you know, I, it, the, the, There's this, gotta be like, is, like, this is the story. Can't like right AI here. do that now? Can't like AI put you like in, <laughs> in the Blackhawks locker room or something? Like, we, we could do a fake background too, but that would look wonky. I need the real. Okay. I, I appreciate your desire for I believe in you. I, I, I need more bobbleheads. I, I need I need I need stuff. I've got I've got some things purchased. It's gonna you know we get we gotta we I have gotta, the new edition. I have my vintage Super Bowl 20 poster. I got that amazing. actually from a comic book dealer in New England, believe it or not. What's underneath the the Super Bowl one? Uh that's a Ryan Adams. Um concert poster it's a tiger i think it was his easy tiger tour and it's a uh, tiger sitting in front of the wrigley field marquee okay and then okay. i have i have ducks uh hot dog stand right over my my left shoulder r.i.p so a lot of pain delicious i yes blade seven seven so maybe i'll get a green screen so the, again the future is bright we'll figure it out i know i've been here for more than a minute and, and so this is unacceptable but you know i am surprised you don't have like some mj stuff yeah, like, i know I, like i mean we're all mj fans but like you know more about mj than i than anyone else I, I, you should I, do the green screen and just put yourself at the mj hit the gate to his mansion in highland park <laughs> That's okay. Done. I'm gonna go take a picture in front of it, and that'll be the thing. Great. Or I like it. There you go. All right, let's get it here. Let's start our weekends. Let's uh, let's go get an Illini winner, Cody. Good luck to you. Credit to you. Big of you. Whatever. Fingers, um, fingers go crossed. Cubs, go White Sox. Go Blackhawks. Bulls. Bears. Whoever. Go to the Sarah, Wolves game. For producing. Go to the Wolves game tonight. You see me? I'll buy you a three dollar beer. Three dollar beers tonight at Allstate. Go let's Wolves. Go. go Wolves, baby. Come on. This has been the Chicago Sports Podcast. We will see you next time. We all city like the mayor. 